we introduced the gate model quantum computer as a universal way of transforming quantum states into other quantum states. Today we are looking at a different model called uh, the adiabatic quantum computing, which can also achieve uh, universal quantum computations, but to do this, we have to understand a bit more of the underlying physics. So we talked about Hamiltonians, which describe the energy of the system, and we talked about unitaries, which describe the evolution of a system. So let's go back to our classical Ising model, but the quantum mechanical description, where we have the sigma z operators acting. So this was the energy of the system. It was the expectation value of the Hamiltonian in a particular quantum state. So let you just look at this, the Hamiltonian acting on the state. It has the exact same form as a unitary acting on it to, to get the evolution of the state. And there is actually a correspondence, and this is what is described by the Schrodinger equation. So it says that the temporal evolution of the system is described by the Hamiltonian applied to, the, to that state, the time-dependent state. Then you have the imaginary number here and the, the reduced Planck constant, but the main part is that you know the temporal evolution depends on on the Hamiltonian. And if you solve it in case in the case where the Hamiltonian does not depend on time, then what you get is this formula, which is exactly the unitary acting on a particular state for some duration t. t. So basically every unitary operation has an underlying Hamiltonian and every gate in a gate model quantum computer has an underlying Hamiltonian. And the Hamiltonian is always a Hermitian operator which means that its adjoint is itself which implies actually why this operation is unitary. So there's a very direct connection between the mathematical properties of these objects. So, with that in mind, let's take a look at the adiabatic theorem. Imagine that you have two Hamiltonians. One, which I call H0, is just a transverse field. It's just transverse field acting on a number of sites. We know that the ground state, the lowest energy state of this, is the equal superposition. Now we can take another Hamiltonian, for instance, our classicalizing model, and they can take a time-dependent Hamiltonian, which mixes the two. So t starts in 0 and goes all the way up to 1. So if t equals 0, it's just a transverse field. And at t equals 1, it's only the classicalizing model. And if we change this time sufficiently slow, and we start in the ground state of this Hamiltonian, then we end up in the ground state of this Hamiltonian. And as I, as I explained in the video on the classicalizing model, this is actually a hard problem to solve for nature because it can happen that, it, uh, that the system gets trapped in a local optimum. Whereas here we are, we are applying this trick, this adiabatic transition, to go from a ground state and ensure that we stay in the lowest energy solution throughout the change, and then we can read out the solution, the global solution uh, uh, of our problem. The, the caveat here is that there is a speed limit. A gap of a Hamiltonian means the difference between the ground state, the lowest energy state, and the first excited state. And if we denote the gap by, by delta, then each and every one of the time steps in this change will have a different gap. You have to take the minimum of that and square it and the speed limit will depend on the inverse of that. So if there's a very, very close case of the excited state being, uh, being very close to the ground state, then the speed limit can be very, very bad. So it do, it's not true that you can solve, say, NP-hard problems faster or exponentially faster, because those problems, the hard cases, typically have a very, very, very tiny gap, which will imply that the speed limit is actually exponential. So, we can use this to perform universal calculations. That's called adiabatic quantum computing. So in this case, the Hamiltonian has this part, which is just your classical Ising model, 
And we have to add one more term, which is an interaction between transverse fields. So it's not the transverse field Ising model, because there the transverse field only acts on the individual sites. Here you have interaction between these transverse fields. If you, if you are able to implement this Hamiltonian in the hardware, then this model can simulate universal quantum calculations, gate model quantum calculations, and therefore it can transform any quantum state into any other quantum state.